Quotable movies. This is definitely one. Well, I know a lot of smart guys and a few honest ones, and you're both. I'm sorry he didn't die. Give him time. You know a dame with a rod is like a guy with a knitting needle. Let's go down to the bar. We can cool off while we try to impress each other. So many, I lose count. In the epitome of cool is the 1947 Jacques Tournier classic, Out of the Past. To all you out of work soda jerks without a penny to pinch, to the detectives with all the answers, to the dastardly dames who play men like baby dolls, and the trusted ones too pure for this world, and all you double-crossing, backstabbing, ruthless, baby-faced amateurs, this one's for you. So suit up, turn out the lights, put the match to your smokes, and sit back for the darker side of things. Sin a shadow moonlights, noir vimper. An ominous man enters middle America looking for Jeff Bailey. Jeff's running a gas station. I guess that's what you do in the 40s if you're hiding out. Work at a small town pump station. There's a deaf and dumb boy there who tells him Jeff's out fishing with a girl. Jeff, played by Robert Mitchum, is in the beautiful mountains with his babe. There is mystery surrounding him. His answers are vague. Maybe, something, someday, perhaps... Bailey is beckoned by fate to go meet with Whit Sterling again, played by Kirk Douglas, in his first major role. Did you know Kirk Douglas is still alive? 102 years old. One of the last surviving Hollywood Golden Age greats. Man. Jeff begins to tell the story of his past while driving to Lake Tahoe. His real name is Jeff Markham. He's now decked out in three-piece suit, trench coat, and fedora. His entire demeanor has changed. He's smoking a cigarette. Smoke, smoke, smoke. Always smoking. Cigarette, smoking. It never stops. Now I want to smoke. Then, the hard-boiled narration begins. Wit's been shot by a dame. He wants her and hires Jeff to find her. There's 40 grand too, but he's not concerned. Jeff gets a hint she's down south and waits for her there at a cafe. And then I saw her coming out of the sun. It's Kathy. She plays it cool. Let's Mitch him do the work. He waits for her at a late night bar. And then she walked in out of the moonlight. They court... He falls for her. She knows she's been caught. They kiss and the waves crash. I never saw her in the daytime. We seem to live by night. How big a chump could you get to be? I was finding out. They run through the rain. Only a lamp burns. He kisses her neck. Throws in the towel and the door bursts open. This means they're doing it. They head north to San Fran, but not before a very tense scene when Wit checks up on him, almost catching them together. They split up, but Bailey's partner spots him. Jeff gets comfortable after shaking him and decides to meet back up with Kathy. Fisher catches up with them at the country cabin. Wants the 40 grand. She doesn't have it. Him and Jeff fight with the shadow cast high. Boom! There's a gunshot. The camera stays on Mitchum, a car motor. She's gone. A checkbook reveals she had the dough all along. Double crosser. She was using him. Fisher's buried. It's the present now, and Anne drops him off at Lake Tahoe. The rest of the tales got blackmail, patsies, deaths, sleuthing in the shadow, moonlight, and a fitting end. Well... This may be the most classic example of what film noir is. The story is fatalistic, everyone smokes, and whoever did the costuming, bravo, you nailed it. 
Jane Greer's Kathy is the epitome of a femme fatale. In the dark cinematography by Nicholas Musaraka is so moody, broody, and ah. He shot several Val Luton classics like Cat People and The Curse of Cat People, and he's what makes them great. <laughs>